Hello, Grandma DC here in my backyard. And if you thought the weeds couldn't get any worse, can, can you see? Can you see the jungle from the forest? <laughs> we had a storm here last night and it actually knocked some of them down enough that I could see that they were even worse than I thought. I'm gonna go hold you as high as I can. How far can you see? Poor Elvis and Priscilla. <laughs> when they get here, heavens knows how them little things are just going to be. It's going to be like turning me loose in a, you know, cheesecake factory. <laughs> That's the way I'd be. <laughs> okay, today's going to be fun. I have the rest of the day off. and I have a thousand things I want to do. And I found my fairy. My little house cleaning fairy. I knew who it was. Bless you, Leslie. Leslie's been on some of my other videos. And those of you who follow me a lot know my little cousin. And I just love her to death. Anyway, speaking of Leslie, she says the people I bought the goats from are her mom and dad's best friends. Can you imagine? <laughs> Hang on. There was something on this stupid screen. I hate this camera. And it hates me. So anyway, it was their best friends that I bought the goats from and didn't even know it. So uh, she said that her and her sister Sid were going to come over and help me clean a spot so the goats could actually have a place to stand. <laughs> uh, I was hoping there was like some little oasises out there somewhere that we can't see. I don't know. You all been asking for it. I now have time. It's been three full days and the cream has risen. So we're doing cheese and butter today. Hang with me and I hope the camera continues to work. Who knows? <laughs> Here I am. I got one of my gallons of milk out. We're going to take the lid off and see how thick this cream is on there. Oh ho ho. Look at that. Look at that. In case any of you didn't know this, after the cream milk sits for a while, you get the most delicious, sweet, cream that rises to the top. That's unbelievable and I have the perfect thing for skimming me off a little and putting in my keto coffee this morning. I know you're all jealous. I'm sorry to be doing this in front of you. I really am. But I'm not. <laughs> okay, now this bowl is clean and sanitized. You have to keep everything really clean. That's been the hardest part of this whole project for me. And then I'm going to start skimming this cream off. And I'm going to do all three jars until I have all the cream off. The cream on here is about an inch thick, if you were wondering, about down to here. So this is going to take me a little time. And we'll be back when I get it all skimmed. That is a lot more cream than I was expecting to get off of one gallon, so I am really happy. And some of you are wondering, well, how do you tell when you get all the cream off? I don't think this lousy camera will pick it up, but the cream is yellowish, very, very light creamy yellow. And when you get it kind of, kind of skimmed off, you start seeing like little streaks of a little whiter. Some people say blue, but I just kind of sink it in there. And you can sort of see the swirls of milk. So you're getting down to where you don't have much cream anymore and you got just the milk. We're going to put this back in the fridge because we're making cheese later. Oh man, if I could play music it would be that song. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now you know, Grandma's kind of a slob. And cleanliness, well, you know, it's so as good as it is around here. But there is one time that cleanliness is next to the divine and that is when it comes to dealing with milk products. When I milk my own goats and everything, that was clean, clean, clean. So is this today. I have boiled these things and everything else to make everything super clean. Because you don't want any contaminants in there. Milk will absorb flavors super easy. So I now have this bucket, which I haven't used since I had my own goat milk. <laughs> Talk about hard to find. So. I boiled water in it, I rinsed it out, and we're going to put the milk in here and start making the easiest cheese on earth. When you see how easy that is to make ricotta cheese, 
you're going to be like, why haven't I been doing that all my life? So, <laughs> some of you are going, oh, hell no. <laughs> also, you know I'm kind of haphazard about measuring temperatures? Well, when it comes to this, we're going to use a thermometer. I want to get this to 110 degrees. And, you know, I can kind of test it with my finger. You know, I'm good about that. But I think in this case, we will use a thermometer. When it gets to 110 degrees, we'll be back. Okay, as crazy as it sounds, I usually do this with cheesecloth, about triple layers, but I don't have any cheesecloth. I have a brand new cotton tea towel, and I picked up four extra large, brand new. I'm going to use them to drain our cheese. So if you don't have cheesecloth or you can't get it, I know Walmart sells it, but some Walmarts don't, and it's kind of hard to find. It's in the craft section if you can find it. This is a good alternative and or a nice cotton, never been used, clean tea towel. I used to have some tea towels I just used for making cheese and I'd bleach them out and clean them afterwards, hang them in the sun, you know, the whole bit. And that's okay, but just don't use them for anything else. We've got our milk heating on the stove over here. I'm heating it very slowly and gently on low. We don't want to burn that milk. So it's a very slow, gentle heating process. Our butter here is about to room temperature. If it's not warm enough, it'll just turn to whipped cream, which would be delicious, I got to say. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. Mm. But we would prefer that it turns to butter and not whipped cream. So just a few more minutes. We'll be right back, me and Bubba Fett. Mm. Hello, I'm back and a nap later. But my milk has slowly come up to 110 degrees and uh, our cream is getting to be room temperature. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use an acid as a coagulant and in this case I'm using lemon juice because I like my ricotta lemony. Mother likes it with apple cider vinegar. Now I would have used apple cider vinegar but guess what? Couldn't find it. <laughs> Back to what we were talking about. This is 110 degrees thereabouts, which is, you know, very warm to the touch, right? Clean fingers. I have a clean wooden spoon, my favorite to stir it with, and I'm going to put a cup and a half of lemon juice into this warm milk. I have turned it off. It's not on anymore, and we're going to give it a gentle stir to mix, and you will see it start to coagulate in just a little bit. There she goes, see? We're getting curds already. See the curds forming? So I'm going to put the lid on and we're going to let that sit there and curdle. If we have to, if, there's, uh, if it doesn't separate good enough, we may have to add another half cup of lemon juice. Similarly, you may have to add another half cup of apple cider vinegar if that's what you choose to use. But uh, this looks like it's separating pretty good. Oh, yeah, we're starting to separate good. Looky there. So uh, I'm going to let it sit and do its thing. And I'll come back in about hmm, 20, 30 minutes. In the meantime, I think I'll step over here and start my butter. This has been sitting. I took some of it out. <laughs> and put it into Boba Fett. <laughs> I'm drinking decaf. One of the guys, uh, Dr. Berg, said that caffeine can throw you out of ketosis. Maybe I was drinking too much caffeine last time. So I'm just going to pour what I've got left in my cream, what I didn't put in my coffee, what I didn't put in the refrigerator to make ice cream. <laughs> Which is not much. We probably won't have much butter, but it'll be delicious. There we go. We're going to put that into our uh, processor here. Oh, and I'm going to face plant in this bowl. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to pour the rest of it into my coffee. My face is too fat to fit in the bowl. That's unfortunate. It didn't take as long as when Grandma did it with the dasher. But I tell you, it took a while. And my under, whoops, bang. And my understanding is that, uh, I gotta taste it. 
Mmm. It's better. But my understanding is it needs to separate even more. So we're going to run it for another four or five minutes. And then we'll see. butter that is beautiful now I'm gonna put you back up here where you can watch now I'm gonna go ahead and put my ice cubes in here chill that off a little my grandmother used to tell me that I had hot hands and that was no good for kneading butter so I've got this cold bottle of water here but I can see that I'm probably gonna need something even colder this whole process was pretty lengthy. It, it took a good, I don't know, eight, nine minutes. And I'm complaining. When Grandma used to do it, it took hours. <laughs> Dashing or cranking. So we're going to gather this all up. And the reason, like I said, I'm trying to make my hands cold is because otherwise I'll melt the butter. It's pretty delicate at this point. And boy, every little speck you got around shows in it. <laughs> Basically, I'm wanting to squeeze the whey out of it uh, so that all I've got here is butter. I noticed that the Cuisinart itself kind of made the butter warm. And uh, probably if I had done it any more, we may have lost the butter. I don't know. But uh, this will help. The cold and putting it in the cold will definitely help you know solid up that fat so that we can squeeze see the way coming out of it we're gonna squeeze that way right out of it we're gonna wash that man right out of our hair <laughs> well this is just the way grandma did it I mean there's people on here doing this that have other ways to do it and stuff but uh, my grandmother always used ice and uh, this is the way she taught me. So that's it for Butter Making 101 with Grandma Daisy. And I'm going to take this eventually, and I'm going to put it inside of my clean hanky. And I'm going to wrap it up. And I'm going to squeeze a little more juice out of it, and then we're going to put it in the fridge and let it solid up. Uh -huh, I might have gotten most of the way out of it. It was pretty good. Cheese has been sitting here coagulating. I have to admit, I added another half cup of lemon juice. Lemon juice is not quite as acidic as the um, apple cider vinegar or vinegar. So it took some extra lemon juice, but this is what you get. You, you can see all the curds in there and they're just clean hands. Just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to put a colander into a another bowl. There's a lot of whey that's going to come off of this. Um, I could save the whey and, and do something with it. I don't know. I haven't decided yet if I want to go to that kind of trouble. i got a gallon and a half of milk left. I don't think I need the whey. Too bad I don't know somebody with pigs. Pigs love whey. Then again, so do chickens. Hey, there you go. We're going to put this in our colander like so. I am going to go over to the sink because there's a lot of whey on this. It didn't coagulate quite as good as I would have liked. I just think the lemon juice doesn't do as good as the um, vinegar would have. I'm going to have to get me some apple cider vinegar. I thought I had some. <laughs> the rest of it's going to go in here, I hope. I hope. And uh, as you will be able to see, we are draining through into the bowl below and this will take a little while because the this is a pretty thick cloth and I'm going to let that drain down before we pour the rest of it in there back in about I don't know however long this takes 
Isn't that pretty? Look at all that cheese in there just draining away. Oh my heavens. I fed some of the whey to my chickens. But the chickens said, no way, no how. Okay, the puns are getting worse. I know. Way to go, Grandma. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. All right. I'm still waiting for this to drain. Yay, look who came to visit. It's my fairy, Leslie. <laughs> she was the one that cleaned my house. I knew it was you. Anyway, so here we are. We've drained. We now have ricotta cheese. I'm going to salt it, keep it in this thing, wrap it back up, stick it in the refrigerator, in the bowl, it'll continue to drain, and then when we're done, feta cheese. Mmm. Oh, it's not bad even without salt. So, that, my friends, is how you make cheese. I didn't say how you cut the cheese. I was going to say that. I have some really bad jokes in this video. They're going to kill me. You know, I wouldn't be caught dead eating butter that came from the store. <laughs> no way, no how. Way, get it? W-H-E-Y. It's a dairy joke. Oh, well. But this doesn't have any of the chemicals. And it's amazing. <laughs> you can almost get a spoon and go after it. Wow, you gotta try this. Don't forget to hit like, share, or subscribe. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun for me. On a day off. Yay. Bye bye. I love y'all. It was way too cool of a recipe. Way harder than I thought it was going to be. Way to go, Grandma. Way until they see the next recipe. They're getting worse. <laughs> well, well, there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> I'm sorry, you'll just have to wait for the next video. <laughs> oh, yeah, I tickled myself, but no one else. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to weigh in on this subject, but you know, I thought it was a great way to make butter and cheese. A great way. Way. Nothing? Nobody? Just me? Yeah, right. I'll stop now. It's good. You love me, don't you? <laughs> At least I'm gonna love you. <laughs> Alright, Skudner's gotten back into the stickers. I've been pulling stickers out all summer. This is getting really short, and all he's left with is this one sprig on top. And I don't know that he's going to have that by the time I get all these stick tights out of his hair. Oh, no, look, look at there. They're pulling out hair. He may be completely bald. Poor thing. No, nope, you got to stay here till I get them all out. Sorry, dude. So, uh, people have asked me, they say, what kind of dog is he? A <laughs> Mexican hairless. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that anything will grow his hair back on top of his head. Oh, he's got them all the way down to the scalp. Oh my gosh. I hate hitch hitchhikers, stick tights, riders, hitch alongs, whatever you want to call them. What do you call them? Stick tights. Stick tights. They're stickers. Yeah. Everybody has different names for them, you know, hitchhikers, mm. stick tights. Chickweed. Or like uh, beautiful. Look, Leslie. <laughs> That's all we got there left we go. of the mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs>